This week we got a new update for some new drag races we can do with other players. How does it work? Is it good money? Is it fun? Let's find out. To start the drag races, you can go into the jobs section in the online tab, launch it from there. You can also head outside the car meet across the street to the pink circle over here. I think this one is just the one track and they should change tracks every week or so. It's pretty similar to other races. You can do point to point or point to point no contact. You can choose sports, muscle or tuners for the class of cars. Time of day, weather and traffic is all pretty similar to before. Can do variable traffic and I think that's what the default is because everyone seems to leave it on. Yeah buddy, see you later. Oh! Which I think is a random amount between very low and very high. Something to note is if you put on point to point no contact, slipstream and catch up do get turned off. So if you want more fair racing, I would go with that one. For custom vehicles, you can have them off or restricted. I'm not sure why it's only these ones you can get, but there's quite a few that are disabled in the sports category and the muscle category. But in each class, there are two very, very good cars that I've been using recently. In the tuner category, that would be the Comet S2, the Dominator ASP, and the Growler. Three very top ones, in my opinion, first place goes to the Growler, then the S2, then the Dominator. But the key thing about these cars is that they have stance. So before you go in the drag race, go into the interaction menu in free mode and put on stance. That activates a speed glitch in all those cars that make the suspension go up and down very fast and give it a big speed boost. You will be winning races like there's no competition. If you don't have any stance cars for the muscle class, I'd definitely go with the Gauntlet Hellfire. And in the sport class, I still feel like the S2 could be up there. I'm actually not certain what the best one would be in no stance, but realistically, you're going to want one of the stance cars. Once the race starts, you'll pull up to the line and start doing a burnout with your car. I recommend holding the gas right away as you're loading into it to not waste any time at all. And you have to keep the needle on the tachometer inside that blue line. If you do that, the tires will be nice and warm and you'll get very nice grip at the launch. If it's not perfect, you'll still get a good launch. It'll say good, great, or perfect burnout depending on how well you do. And as soon as the race starts, you're in manual transmission mode, which is quite different to what GTA is usually like. And I know what you might be thinking. What if I don't want to shift my car and just finish the race in first gear? There's a little chime. Well, sadly, the engine will catch fire, eventually shut down, and blow up. It's quite funny, I didn't realize they added this until someone did it in my race. His car is on fire? But yes, absolutely, you have to shift gears. You can't finish it in first gear. Pay attention to the tachometer. When the needle's in the blue line, you hit right shift on keyboard to go up or right control. I'm not sure what it is on controller. I apologize. It's just like real life. You don't really want to shift at the red line. You want to do it a little bit before. And then you'll get a little bit of a boost if it's a good shift. I think no boost if it's a bad shift. And then you just keep going until the end. Closer to the end of the race, you'll get a nitrous boost. You press E on keyboard to use that. Gives you a huge boost of speed but it doesn't last forever. I definitely recommend using this towards the end because unlike in real life, it increases your top speed by quite a bit. And I was able to get over 200 miles an hour with the Comet S2 and the Growler. So save it towards the end for a nice long straight. If you ever played Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, it's just like using the turbo, wait for a very long road and then bam. Then you go all the way to the end, hopefully keeping up your speed and you're finished. That's pretty much it. Everyone else finishes and then the job ends. I wish there could have been like a ladder or something where the top two people go head to head. Could have been cool to see. Could have been cool to have that manual mode be applicable to free roam too, or enable the tachometer. That would be very nice. Sadly, I didn't see an option. I don't think we've gotten that one. Maybe in GTA 6, definitely on the wish list. I have a few helpful tips for the drag race. As soon as the countdown starts, you'll have to shift up about three times pretty quickly. And each time you shift the blue line does get a bit smaller so be careful of that as well. But once you get those first quick three ones it slows down quite a bit so you can relax focus on the road a little bit more but it's very important to get those first three shifts perfect. It is on double money this week so I definitely recommend getting out there and trying some. If you got the Comet S2, the Growler or the Dominator ASP in stance mode, you will be perfectly fine to win most of these unless your opponents are in them as well. And turn traffic off. It is so annoying having these guys pull out in front of you in the drag race. If you lose all your speed and your opponents are still going by, you're never gonna catch them, but it definitely can make for some funny moments. So up to you, have some fun with it. That's pretty much it though. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of the new drag races. Let me know if there's any other cars I might've missed that are really good ones. I'm pretty certain it's the Growler, the S2 and the ASP, but there could be others. Let me know if you find one. Leave a like if you enjoyed, of course, and subscribe if you're new, it really helps me out. And I'll see you all later.